You are welcome to the Nigeria Filmmaker, a podcast about Nigerian filmmakers, their films, and how we can build a diverse and functional industry. I'm your host, Sele Gott. On this episode, my guest is Anita Ebobe. She's the co-founder of Inside Nollywood. We talk about the Inside Nollywood Film Journalism Fellowship, the industry journal, and the audience. If you're a new listener, you're welcome, and I hope you enjoy Hi, Anita. You're welcome to Nigeria Filmmaker. Hi. Thank you for having me. Can you introduce yourself? Um, so my name is Anita Eboigbe. I am a... I, I don't know. It's very, very tricky, but I work in media. Uh, I work in media business specifically. And uh, I also run a platform called Inside Nollywood. So where we just want to expand or improve the quality of conversations that I had in the industry. And when I'm not doing that, I am just talking about film or media all the time and trying to figure out how we can expand the industry generally. Okay. Can we start at the beginning? What did you study in school? Uh, communication. My first degree is in communication. And then I have an MBA with specialization in finance and, in, and investment. And then gone on to do a couple of courses in operations and media products. Yeah. Nice. So, um, at what point did you branch into Nollywood? Um, Nollywood. I mean, like, I don't think anybody ever like had anybody who is in film or who does anything related to film ever had a particular moment where they branched into it because. Uh, you, you kind of grow up in Nollywood around, so it's not like a branching, but at the point that I thought I love this industry enough to do some work that might be painful and hard, but you know, I think that was um, that should be in 2012 and that's when I decided to start paying closer attention to the industry and seeing how we can, you know, expand the the way that we do business, you know, the kind of stories that we're telling and the way we're telling them and the way we're presenting ourselves to to the world. Okay. And um, that first experience, what was it? Uh, it was interesting. I think someone had a filmmaker. Now I can't even remember which, but um, I had just done a cinematography thing. And then um, people wanted me to write scripts. For a reason, my, my first like foray into Nollywood was people wanting me to write scripts, and um, I just wasn't interested in writing scripts because I just wasn't going to put in all that work if it wasn't going to pay enough. So there was that. There was also so eventually, I think it was I, was, I just kept gathering data on the industry because I I really lo- love numbers, and I realized that a lot of people do not love numbers because they think the numbers are scary. So I wanted to explain or make sense of what was happening in the industry. So figuring what was out, um, a lot of people were now more interested in like the industry at the time. And the days of the home video were like fast fading. Mm. And, you know, things were happening. A lot of changes were happening at the same time. So I wanted to be able to track that growth. So as a side pet project for myself, so I'll go home and just have a folder where I would keep like all the things I was gathering about the industry. I think 2016 was when it really made sense to start to see how I should um, work within the industry. I was at the news agency of Nigeria hmm. and on the entertainment decks. And my boss at the time was, you know, very interested in covering the industry. And um, I would just reach out to people and just know about what they were trying to work on and how best we could amplify them. And you decide to experiment with publishing different things from different angles that were not just rip- about like critiquing a film or that were not about um, talking about the premiere or something. I just wanted to see how we could write in the industry in a way that elevated the discourse, but at the same time wasn't about critiquing. So. Most times when people talk about criti- um, elevating discourse in the industry, they're mostly about critiquing. And I just 
wasn't sure that that's what I wanted to do. Uh, and, and it kind of just blossomed from there, from then on, really. Okay. What were you doing to the point that you started inside Nollywood? Uh, so a lot of people don't know this, but uh, I have spent a chunk of my life as a journalist, um, award-winning one, in fact. So mm. I, so in the, in the time that before we had inside Nollywood, remember that I had just, I had been treating Nollywood as a side project. So I had a couple of friends who were trying to invest in films or they were trying to like catch the wave and I'll just compile the data and share with them. Yeah. Or I'll just spend time, you know, analyzing the business of film with them. And a couple of people were like, I, we think that you should, you know, make this a job. And I just wasn't interested again because I couldn't see what the profit, monetary profit of it was going to look like. Um, and so the main job that I was doing that I still have done for a very long time is journalism. So I was an entertainment journalist. Pre I am predominantly a data journalist. I have just happened to work in sectors that required a data journalist. So entertainment uh, and very recently conflict and development. So those were the things that I was doing as well as like going to school and just training and you know taking a couple of pet projects i like pet projects a lot like i like to just see something and experiment or see a company that needs my help and you know just go in there and see if whatever they're doing is of interest to me and, and trying out yeah there was that as well um inside nollywood started in 2021 Okay. Um, Daniel Pichuku had reached out. Uh, I, I run my own newsletter, Nollywood and, and so Daniel Pichuku was subscribed to it and he had reached out and was saying, uh, he wanted to start a publication and wanted me to start a publication with him. And that's how Mr. Nollywood came. Well, well, you know, literally a year and a couple of months old, but we have completely changed the the landscape of what it is to, you know, report the industry. So, yeah. yeah. Nice. Part of um, how you um, define your company is that you guys um, create an environment for conversations to be had. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, last year, the wave of um, horrible buses was sweeping through Nigeria and um, Nollywood as an industry decided that, yeah, they had a lot of grievances to air. Um, yeah. Like, what made you guys, because you guys are the ones that, you know, decide to um, schedule this space and host everybody and, you know, moderate that conversation. Why did you guys um, jump on it? And, you know, what, what did you learn about the industry from from those series of spaces? So what, was, what has been quite interesting um, is that I have just, I'm a very shadow person, and even this interview we're having, like it took it took a lot for me to uh to want to do this. So I'm a very shadow person. I like to um just as a preamble to answering your question. Yeah. I, I like to just do stuff behind the scenes and just you know let the birds fly and go home and rest. Mm. Uh and so but but that also meant that I because when you I wore flower or when you it's kind of like know how to fade in the background and it also comes from being a journalist you hear a lot of things but the industry for a long time had not practiced a culture of openness you know where there's like direct interaction with everything that we need to do or direct interaction with the audience uh is a culture of transparency and so when the horrible bosses thing was happening as a wave we just felt hey we hear a lot of stories about the industry all the time and our, our goal is to make sure that there's more open conversation within the industry yeah. let's try and see if nollywood is going to if some people want to people are going to be brave enough you know to to talk about things and so we can begin to set the motions for reform in place and one or two people was what we said and it eventually snowboarded into a three-day six part about hundred thousand people coming wow. on board and coming to listen and share. And it was insane because I can't begin to tell you the chain reaction of events that have happened because that it was like you, you first open, you know, 
a bus to open uh, something and then people are just, people are like, finally a space, finally a space for me to share what I think. Yeah. The people who came to talk publicly are not up to half of the people who came to talk privately. Mm. And the issues that we now have to start resolving privately, the things that we, uh, I think uh, we, we we shared a couple of the things that happened as a result. It was just, it was just insane. So what, what motivated us to do that was for, it was long overdue. It was long overdue for us to give people a sense of belonging. You know, in an industry where we say that we want the best of the best and we want creatives and we don't have, we're not that too big yet. We're not big enough yet to be having some of the issues that we're already having. And so it was, we just needed to like spotlight a couple of these things that were happening. Yeah. And um, like for you guys, you know, you said you um, you listened to a few of these complaints. Like what, what, was, what are the most popular ones? Uh, most popular one definitely is um, sex for roles, and then the other one is like mistreatment of like crew members. Mm. I, I think that the the two were very heartbreaking, but the one that is way come up place both for men and women is mistreatment of crew members. And, and to be very honest, if you are going, to, you are not going to pay people. Don't promise them that you are going to pay them. Don't. You know, things like that. And those were the two main ones. Discrimination, a lot. Mm. Lack of structure, you know, in the guilds. Lack of structure in the way, in the in the entry of, in entering the industry. Um, lack of structure generally in how the industry is operated. And distribution of, like, opportunities across because there is no structure. Mm. Um, those were also, like, things that came up. Okay, so when you say across, across the country or... Across what? Yeah, across the industry, across the country. Okay. All right. And um, how were you guys able to, like, you know, help in some of those situations? Uh, in areas where we could reach out, we reached out directly to the parties involved. The necessary parties saw that we were going to keep pushing on it, and then they took action and they corrected things like that. We also worked with a couple of people behind the scenes to put some structure in place. Uh, it's not perfect. Uh, and, but I mean, we did set up, we did set, try and see how much we could, you know, use our power as the fourth state of the realm. At the core of like the work we do is educating. So we need to make sure that people continue to be educated, you know, uh, about film audience development, filmmaker development, mm. just education across, yeah. Okay. I mean, let's start from the less obvious one, like um, educating the audience. How do you think the audience can be better educated? Um, I mean, the audience just needs to, like, a very low-hanging fruit one is people calling series, season film. Mm. Um, the audience just needs to uh, get better at understanding the nuances of, like, film film development how long it takes to make a series how long it takes to make a film what they should be expecting uh how to vocalize the things that they feel about a film or about a series because oftentimes like we, the audience has been told that if they don't like something it's because they're not educated enough or because they're not rich enough or because they don't understand the world that the story is set in and these are the people that watch like sci-fi and watch other themes and genres yeah. from um, other places so the audience needs to understand that if you want things to get better in the industry you better you can you should use your voice more if more of you say you don't like something things are just going to get better if you boycott things more things are going to get better if you like something take people to go and see it you know support it wholeheartedly because the more that you support the things that you like it shows the trend that more films that you like will be made. If you don't suppose something you like, you can't expect that more films that you like are going to be made. It's like, it's just simple mathematics, but you also just have to give the audience an opportunity to understand where the filmmaker is coming from and decide for themselves if they like, you know, where the filmmaker is coming from. Okay. All right. So as a, as a um, journalist, so as a data person that, you know, um, engages with the industry, do you enjoy watching films? <laughs> 
Why why wouldn't I enjoy watching films? No, Maybe I mean I there are some people that don't don't um particularly uh, on the most serious note, like why how would I be able to do the work that I do without enjoying watching films? Okay, so um can you mention I mean this could be um related to Nollywood or in general. Um mm-hmm. what is that one movie or um series that if you are stuck on an island you have be happy to keep um watching it over and over again. Usually when people ask film people about film questions, they are asking so that they can judge like what the person's artistic taste is. Mm. Uh but to, to be very frank, I'm I, I don't really care. I think that a, a show you want to watch on the island is something on an island when you're alone is something that gives you joy, like yeah. intense joy that you don't have to think too much about the plot or think too much about like uh, production or whatever. And I'll probably take um, Suits. Okay. Because it's easy viewing. You kind of know how every episode is going to end, but it's so well done and it has great rewatch value. And then for a film, um, it will be like a very, very old Nollywood film called Naked Sin. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Those two. Because Nollywood films are, old Nollywood films are just like made for comfort. I don't know how to explain it, but they just, I don't know if it's nostalgia. They feel fam- it's familiar. It's, yeah, it's, it's just, you know, wow, I'm not thinking too much, but it's so well done. It feels like a person you know, lives my life and stuff like that. And I mean, they tend to be layered. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. You guys are a little under two years or yeah, one, mm-hmm. one and a half year. Um. You guys decided to, you know, um, start the film journalism fellowship. Um, why? What was the need that you guys were trying to fill there with deciding to start the fellowship? It's a simple thing, right? Um, if you're trying to improve the quality of conversations, it only makes sense that there should be more people having the conversations. Yeah. There should be more people who understand the reasons for having these conversations. And in our case, the more people are journalists, like you need more people who are content creators um, um, and journalists to talk about the industry in ways that can actually push the conversation forward and drive action. And someone had to do it. Someone had to create the pipeline where you take people who are enthusiastic about these things, teach them the things that they need to know, uh, nurture, guide, mentor them and then push them into the industry, give them wings to fly, give them access they need to tell the stories. So that, because there's so many stories to tell in Hollywood and people need to be equipped to tell the stories that we need to tell because it's one thing to document, it's another thing to document properly. It's another thing to document in a way that pushes, you know, something forward, in a way that spurs something to success. And that's really what it is. If we're asking filmmakers to get better, if we're asking, um, the audience to get better. The journalist doesn't have a high horse to stand on or sit on. We also need to get better. Yeah, definitely. And um, what were some highlights from, you know, interacting with the first cohort of the fellowship? Listen, have you read the works of our, like, in, in an average inside, inside Hollywood fellow? Like, have you read the things that they do? Yeah. I mean, like, it's, it's all about giving people a platform to, to launch the career that they so love, you know. Uh, and the highlight for me is just seeing people come into the um, industry, uh, into the fellowship. And then we do, like, a free fellowship survey and we check out their skill level and the way they feel about the industry. And it's all low scores, low scores, low scores. And then after the fellowship, we're just not only seeing high scores from all they've learned and all they have become, but also seeing you know, their work all over. Like, the highlight is every time an I and fellow publishes something and people are like, oh, my God, this is so good. This is so different. And I go and check, hmm, who wrote it? And I say that it's, an, it's just the highlights. It's like, it's like endorphins times 15. You know, 15 of, the, of them just, you know, going out in the world and trying out what, what, what they, they have to do and telling the stories that need to be told. Yeah. And um, how many entries did you get? Like, how many people tried to get into the fellowship? Oh, we have it. We had it almost 200 people trying oh. to get into the fellowship, uh, which was very insane to us because when we we're putting it out, we we're like, you know what? 
we just want this thing to be better still in nigeria and africa never really gets the kind this kind of structure but let's see if people will be interested in this and it was insane because first day we had like 50 people apply and it's like you guys are interested in this wow very interesting and yes so it was a very tough thing for the committee to be able to pick 15 people out of about 200 people uh, and just, you know, put, I push the other ones as I was a very tough criteria. But most importantly, the most important criteria was a willingness to want to see the industry grow. Mm. And that's demonstrated in the essay that, you know, they sent, the samples that they sent. Okay. And were these just like um, people... Or would I say Nigerians or people in the Nollywood space or um, other Africans submitted? Uh, other Africans submitted, which was also kind of us, but for the first cohort, we really just wanted Nigerians and not just people in the Nollywood space. We didn't want people in the Nollywood space. We wanted Nigerians who just wanted to write and who loved the film industry. And so you have someone like Nalu, for instance, who is in the East and is writing about angles about the Eastern like, filmmaking market that people had the ever write about yeah. you know and you have like you just have people just around different perspectives and writing solid things that are going to be valid for life you know yeah so yeah okay and apart from you know articles and um film reviews like what other parts of um what other ways do you think um you know the coverage or the documentation of um nollywood films and the filmmakers can improve i mean this what you currently do a podcast uh definitely podcast and this is what i'm going to say we should explore all mediums necessary to document our industry um if, like one of the things i love about good content is that it's like it's like real estate in, in a sense you get the ip you have an ip it doesn't make sense now. It's going to make sense tomorrow. It's going to make sense next year. Someone's going to find value in it. It can be footage for this or reference for this or document for this. And so just create um, about the industry in formats that are interesting. You know? Yeah. Okay. Hey, can you mention three random facts about yourself? Three random facts. Three random facts. Uh, hmm. I am an extremely introverted person uh which always comes as a shock yeah and secondly i i love wearing rings i think i have about 60 rings oh. uh 60 to 90 i don't know but i'm buying a new set like every time like i really really enjoy wearing rings um what other thing is random hmm i don't, I don't know what other random fact let me see I really, really like Greek yogurt. I know a lot of people don't like it. Yeah. I, I, if I could have Greek yogurt like every day, I would. But, yeah. Okay. You also started um, a journal called The Industry. Mm -hmm. And this has articles about, you know, different, would I say, filmmakers, films, um general business i mean it's a business journal like um can you talk more about it the journal so the idea behind the industry is uh interesting we wanted to break down what was happening in the industry but without language that alienated people so uh, we've got a couple of people say uh it doesn't it's not the language is not strict enough and i'm like no, that's not the point. The point is for us to take things like this and make it as common as possible. Like the average person should know what's going on in the industry. The industry is small and it's growing, and it's not quite a time for us to start, you know, putting things in language that people don't understand. So um, the the goal behind the journal is to have a snapshot of what is going on and how we are growing or not growing. And the things that we need to watch out for, the things that are working or not working. Uh, and last but not least, um, just a spotlight on the pillars or emerging pillars per time. You know, so mm -hmm. that's the entire idea behind it. 
Okay, so um, I mean, you know, you you work with data and you kind of track some of these things. What are some trends you have noticed with Nollywood at the moment? Um, well, trends, we just need to, we need to take advantage of the things, the attention that we're getting, but at the same time, we need to know how to make money. I, I haven't, we haven't quite figured out our business models yet. So once in a while, we have like lucky breaks, but at the stage where we're at now, we need to be able to say, this is what the business model for this is, and this is what you know, how we can replicate this year or do this here or do that in this other place. So the major trend is that um, we need to win the audiences back to us as much as possible. Mm. Um, we just need to be able to sustain the attention of the audience. It, it, it was, it's slipping away, whether it's in cinema or streaming, it's slipping away. Um, but we're just too concerned with vanity matrix, like, oh, first person to do this or first person to do that to be able to get it. Yeah. Okay. One important, you know, I guess trend is that um, the box office numbers for Nollywood titles have been going down. Wow, wow, wow. Yeah. What What do you think is the uh, some of the reasons for that? Um, I mean, it's the simple reason. We so we like to pretend like our box office is very complicated. Oh my God, our audience is very complicated. But. Honestly, data has shown that that's not true. Hmm. You're just not creating something that the audience can, can thinks is good enough for them to pay attention to. And good enough does not mean it has to be Steven Spielberg or you know Tarantino or whatever. It's good enough is just is it worth my money? And whatever the audience thinks is, is worth their money per time is dependent on the season of the year and whatever is going on. So. When you look at these factors, there's baseline good. Most of the time, we can't even do baseline good well. You know, you're watching a film and the audio is all over the place, or the pictures are great, but the story is non existent, or something happened. And that person comes out to say, Oh, Nigerian audience does not understand me. No, you're, there's no language. You've not given us anything to understand. So um, it's not a thing of you doing one genre or doing another one. It's just a, a thing of is it baseline good? Is it baseline good enough for somebody to have? some feeling of endorphins at the end, you know, because if someone has that, then they want to feel it again. And they want someone they love to feel it again. And then they keep bringing people and, you know, the thing starts, you know, going from there. That's the biggest issue that we have is that we just don't have enough films that are baseline good. Not great, though, baseline yeah. good. Okay. And, um, you know, looking at the business case of Nollywood, um, with how the filmmakers are currently, you know, kind of exploring, you know, making money from their IP. Like, what do you think are some areas that maybe are being overlooked? Uh, I, I, I don't think it's overlooked as much as it is value. Uh, so it's like... People are not valuing. So well, it's two things, Chad. The films are very good and not valued properly. And then, like in terms of monetary value, and then the films are really bad. Well, are really bad. So the spoil market for the good films. So we think that we need to do, do better. I just make good films. Like I know how to negotiate properly. We we suck at negotiating. We feel very grateful for the fact that someone wants to buy our IP. And so oftentimes we just ruin like the leverage that someone else who has made a good product is bringing on the table because we have lessened um we have lessened the value of the entire industry yeah okay as the industry keeps you know trying to be recognized abroad and keep growing um you know we in recent years we have you know made a better effort at trying to submit um films um for the oscars um last year was a a very interesting um you know ton of events what do you think about like yeah all the drama surrounding nigeria's selection or non-selection of a film to represent the country I have an article to say. I, I just think you know, the 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 fact they submit something is very classic. 
It's very us. It's nothing new. Um, and also, it did not seem last year that we actually wanted to submit anything. And none of the films really, really... I mean, have you seen what people submit to the Oscars in that category? Yeah. And are we saying that we want to submit for submission sake? This is not negating all the drama that happened. The drama was just ridiculous. Uh, but even if drama didn't happen, to be very, very honest, did we really say it's like somebody get, scores an A in your class and then you are saying the only reason why you that you did have asked work, you're saying the only reason why you did not get the A is because you did not submit. Like, so if it's in terms of like pushing narrative forward and helping us gain some conversation on the global space, uh, was it two variety articles, one in the Y article that we'll get and then what? I don't we already paid for that anyway. There were like accusations going around that there was, you know, financial inducement and all that. What you know, how do you think like um you know the selection committee or you know these kind of bodies in Nigeria can be a bit uh, more transparent and fair in the way they are run or operated. I mean, the industry doesn't have enough structure to demand transparency from people. Uh, it's just, see, at the end of the day, people are going to do what they're going to do. And we might want to say, hey, we want one more transparency, we want one more this. But people are just going to do what they need to do. Also, there is the fact that we are not, there's not trust. Like, we are not clear on what the processes are. Like, there's just so much, like, everything is just shrouded in, like, secrecy because it helps some people feel very relevant. And we like to do that kind of thing where we feel like we're in the inner circle and all of that mm. in, in the industry. So I do, I really don't know. That's, that's something that they need to solve soon. It's not like I don't know what to say, but it's not going to mean anything if people involved are not going to have an attitude change. So there's that. Okay. So far, um, it could either be, you know, something that happened in your career or, you know, inside Nolly or for the industry as a whole. Like, what has been your happiest Nollywood moment? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> ah, happiest Nollywood moment. That's, that's, that's fascinating. Um, honestly, the happiest thing that's happened to me in Nollywood is just seeing a lot more people having better conversations in the industry. Like just seeing a lot more people like having film communities, holding people accountable, um, saying clearly why they don't like a film versus, and why they like a film. Um, all of this that is happening in the film press right now and the way it's growing, plug it in my veins, I love it. Um, I'm very interested in film press because I think that media helps detect how fast an industry will grow or not. And so, so there's that. For for general industry stuff, honestly, we take each day as, as it comes. I don't think I have one very cathartic or one very, this is, you know, this is the day that the Lord has made in Hollywood kind of day. Yeah. Um, I don't know what that makes me. But yeah. Okay. And, um, you know, like a lot of times when, yeah, audience members or, you know, critics are, you know, pointing out some issues with some films. The filmmakers mm -hmm. get defensive. Why Why do you think there's always that animosity? I, I think the way the art is designed, um, people are just ne generally going to feel defensive of their art. Like, the, they're generally going to feel like oh my god like what is what is wh wh why are you speaking about the art something that i spent so long and so much of my energy like working and, and doing something creative in nigeria is hard like raising funds doing it's difficult and eventually executing it is tough so it makes sense why they are defensive but a lot of what they are doing is not art uh so it's like if you are not one of the things that you quickly learn especially if you are trying to do better at your career in your career or in life is that you need to be able to take feedback regardless mm -hmm. of how the feedback comes 
And so when I see that people are being defensive, it just tells me that they are not ready to do better. I don't waste time on people who are in defensive. I get it. I, you can go home to your friends and rant about it. In fact, you can pick up the phone you, and literally mm-hmm. whatever, just rant mm-hmm. about it to feel better about yourself. But coming on a public pl- platform to call your audience out, yeah, uh, I don't know how to engage with it. And so I, I, I just feel, I just feel like people can do better. Okay. Um, so yeah, what what's um, next for? The inside Nollywood brand. Yes, I have to wait and, and see what that looks like. Uh, we're, we're just going to... Our mission is very clear, and that is to improve the quality of conversation. So whatever it is that does that, we're, we're open to doing it, to trying to, you know, make sure that it works. Yeah, so um, yeah, how can people keep up with you and the work you do? Just, just subscribe to the newsletter. Um, we, we're on Twitter predominantly so at in nollywood underscore uh my twitter handle is at Ewebe anita very simple stuff uh just follow subscribe to our newsletter and then you never miss a thing like we uh we make sure to keep our subscribers updated with everything okay thanks anita for coming on the podcast thank you so much uh thank you so much for having me honestly this has been fun We have come to the end of this episode. Remember to rate and review the podcast. You can also follow me on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Selegal Film and the podcast at the Niger Film Pod to share your feedback. You can now support the podcast by visiting the website to donate. See you on the next episode. Have a good one.